Hello and welcome once again to vehiclemaintenanceandrepairs.com If you remember our motto, in helping others we prosper, it is a motto I live by. If you recall the last time, um, the first video I made was titled How to Fit Spark Plugs to Your Car, Photo Illustrated. This time around um, we're going to go to part 2, so that is How to Fit Spark Plugs to Your Car, part 2. Part 1 we handled uh, this system, okay, an individual coil system, which was in a, a Kia Picanto. The system we're going to be handling this time around is a Volkswagen Polo 1.6. Um, it is basically a centralized coil system with four terminals, and each terminal has a plug wire or HT lead attached to it, which runs down to each individual spark plugs. And as you can see, one, two, three and four HD leads. This is the system that we're going to be doing. Um, just a warning that uh, this is the exhaust manifold system down there. It is the part of the car that heats up probably the quickest. So this area here could get pretty hot. So when you, pro when you do this procedure, please allow the car to cool down for a while. If you are very much in a hurry, use a cloth. Um, you know, and uh, uh, throw the cloth over the hot parts so that you do not injure yourself. I'm very concerned about that, please. Do not injure yourself. Be patient, wait for the car to cool down. Um, but if you don't have that patience, like I sometimes don't have, I use a cloth and I make sure I don't get burnt. Once again, my name is Gary De La Cruz. I am a motor mechanic. I've been a motor mechanic all my life, 30 odd years. I have been, I am active in my workshop in Cape Town, I am passionate about fixing motor cars, but what I am most passionate about is sharing my knowledge, because I feel that every person put on earth should have a legacy and leave a legacy behind, and my legacy is that of sharing my knowledge. So let's get on with this, make sure that you have the correct spark plugs, you have the correct uh, spark plug uh, um, number. Um, compare it to the old spark plugs which you have taken out of your car but um, before we even get to that let me show you how to take those spark plugs out these are basically the tools we'll be needing we'll be needing a half inch drive uh, a reversible ratchet uh, a few extensions one or two of them i use a knuckle in there and then most importantly it's a 16 size 16 tube socket to fit over the spark plug to take turn it out and turn it back in i use a um, telescopic magnet which is very handy, very useful um, for taking out uh, plugs, especially in difficult positions where things get hot or spaces uh, restricted. And uh, I have this little tool which I made, it's basically just a piece of fuel loads. Okay, I'll show you how that works later if you haven't seen it in the first video. So with this polo, what we need to do is we just sort of take the air filter on either side. There are no screws or nuts that holds onto it. There is a breather pipe at the back here. Just pop that breather pipe off. Uh, take left hand and right hand and just basically pull up. You will find that it will just pop off because uh, you, have, um, uh, you have these lugs here. Okay, when you turn the filter around, you will notice that it has these grommets over here. Those grommets fit into those lugs. You have two back there and you have two in the front here. So that's basically how you take your air box off. Very easy, very simple. Now we have our spark plugs, wires all exposed. And what we need to do now, we need to remove, we need to pull these off. You just sort of basically pull it back, okay? Pull it back. Um, I use my hands and that's what we do, we just pull it back. Sometimes they are very tight and then you might need to use a pliers just to grip it nicely and, and, and pull it off because as time goes by people maybe do not replace their spark plug timelessly. It does tend to sit and corrode a little bit. So once we've got all our spark plug uh, wires out of the way, we have the tips of the spark plugs uh, basically exposed. We will take our 16 socket with our extension and a leverage bar and we go lefty loosey and we start loosening off our spark plugs. Okay, once you've got all the spark plugs loosened up, um, they're just laying there. So I use my trusty telescopic, um, my trusty uh, telescopic uh, magnetic pickup over there. And uh, as easy as one, two, three, we have the spark plug out. Now we're checking that number I was talking about earlier. Make sure that is the correct number with the new spark plugs which you have bought. But the guys at the auto parts store are normally pretty knowledgeable. They will give you the right spark plug over there when you give them the year and the make and the model of your vehicle. 
So just remember that, or you can just very simply consult your owner's manual. Um, in the back, you will have all the information, the grades of oil that you need, the type of spark plugs that you need with the heat range, they even give you the gap as well. Okay, so we'll take our new spark plugs, we do our normal checks with it, normal checks as in just checking that the gaps are not closed, they haven't fallen, there's no crack on the porcelain, you know, all that kind of thing. But this is a very interesting spark plug. If you look at it, this spark plug here, it basically has three earths, okay? You have a centralized electrode which basically spreads that spark three ways, okay? So what the advantage? You have a wider area that the spark plug is covering and that will burn your fuel and air mixture more efficiently. So we go on to our, my trusty little tool. You just take the back of the spark plugs, you push it into that uh, rubber. The rubber is pretty flexible, so you can go ahead and put the spark plug in um, and get a nice thread on it. Okay, turn it nicely. The thread must go nice and smooth. It mustn't be tight. It must turn nicely by hand. Give it two, three turns. Pop the tool off and then you pop on the socket and ratchet. I use this long extension over here, which basically gives me better reach. And then I've got a crank handle on it just to go quickly. I just turn it and that is just to turn the spark plug against. Okay. The final tightening basically comes with your leverage bar and your extension. Okay. And a lot of people normally wonder, how tight do I make my spark plugs? Look, if you want to get technical, go 20 to 25 Newton meters with a torque wrench. Okay. But other than that, this is what I do. I turn it against with a hand and then I just give it a nip with this setup over here with leverage. Now let me explain to you why I do that. Here you go. The new spark plugs all and the old spark plugs, they all have these this collapsible washer. You can see how thick this washer is over here. So what I do is when I turn the spark plug up against the cylinder head, the spark, this washer starts touching the cylinder head now. So now I can't turn it anymore by hand. I've turned it as tight as I can by hand. So what I do is take my leverage bar and I just give it a bit of a, a nip. Now what I mean by a nip is that we're collapsing this washer here. Look at the next shot. That's your old spark plug over there. Look at how thin that washer is. Look how thick that washer is. So this washer has been collapsed. With collapsing that washer you're basically tightening your spark plug tight enough so that it does not, it does not come loose on its own with vibration. Okay that's how tight you make a spark plug. But if you want to be 100% sure, use a torque wrench and go 20 to or 25 Newton meters. Don't go over 25 Newton meters because that's going to be too tight. Remember, you're going to be taking the spark plugs out again at a later stage because you're going to be doing this. Once you know how to do this procedure, you're obviously going to do it yourself to save a little bit of money. So here we go. We're putting back our spark plug wires. Just make sure that when you put them back that they actually give a little bit of a click in there. Okay. Because you don't want these spark plug wires to basically vibrate off well because there's lots of vibration with the engine while the car's running. It's going gr 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 while the engine is running over there. So at the end of the day, push your spark plug wires on nice and tight. One, two, three and four. Make sure they're all nice and tight. And all that's left to do is to put your air box back on again. And as you know, it's got the it's got the lugs there and the grommets at the bottom of it. So all you do is just push down nice and tight on it. And may I say congratulations once again. You have fitted spark plugs to a Volkswagen Polo Classic or whatever you call it in your country. If you're watching from a different country, we here in South Africa, we call it a Volkswagen Polo Classic 1.6. Okay, now let me remind you about my website. Okay, that was our first uh, video that we did. Okay, how to fit spark plugs to your car, photo illustrated. The one that I'm doing right now is how to fit spark plugs to your car, part two, photo illustrated. And as you can see, it's a very informative site. We've got a lot of how-to operations here, how to repair a tubeless tire, um, informative posts about buying a car, you know, everything that you need to know. I am very intrigued in electric motor cars. I follow the electric motor car industry daily. Okay, I have Google alerts which alerts me to new developments, because as I said in my in my in my earlier uh, um, in my earlier video, we will probably be having every second car as an electric car by the year 20, 20, 20, 20 to 25, Okay, because that is how fast the technology is being developed. Um, as you can see, I do a bit of reviews as well. I've 
done, I've reviewed quite a few things. I even dabble with the insurance quotes, you know, so that you guys can go out there and get good quotes and find out, uh, you know, what, what the best uh, premiums are to pay on your on your insurances. Um, informative posts like why change car oil, electric cars, are we ready for it? Um, reviews on a battery jumper pack, for instance. Uh, wiper blades, three car checks, which I find is really important. Okay, and um, informative posts, you know, such as, uh, you know, this is basically tire inflation. Uh, that's one check that you need to do all the time. Uh, engine oil level, which is very important. Uh, coolant level, very important. If you check this once a week, you could prevent um, weird stuff happening to your car. So I would like to leave you with that. Uh, please uh, like this video. Most importantly, share this video with anybody that you know that you feel it would be useful to. Um, because as you know, my motto um, here at uh, VehicleMaintenanceAndRepair.com is in helping others we prosper. The wheel of life, the circle of life, you know, it just needs to go on and on and on and pass on um, our, info, our, our knowledge to people. Especially when it is going to save you money, it's going to save you time, it's going to give you convenience. So until next time, and until my next post or video, safe motoring, happy motoring, and um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, until next time, goodbye.